Hello everyone, I am Saskia Lankon, Software Engineer WSO2. In this video, we are going to look at stream data type in Balduino. Streams in Balduino are a data type that represent a continuous flow of data. It allows us to process data in real time as it arrives without consuming the data all at once and allowing you to work with large data sets that don't fit in memory. A stream is defined with the stream keyword as stream angular brackets t comma e where members of the stream sequence are of the type t and the termination value is of type e. A shorter definition of stream angular brackets t can be used to mean stream angular brackets t comma nil where the termination value is nil. As an example, in the first example, it is defined as stream angular brackets int. That means the sequence type of the stream is int and the termination value for the stream is nil. In the second example, it defined as stream int comma nilable error. That means sequence type of the stream is integer and the completion type of the stream is nilable error. So it can be error or nil. Now let's see how we can use the stream to handle data. Assume I want to read a CSV file that contains employee details in an organization and iterate through each data to do some operation. We can use Balrona stream to handle data in CSV file. For that, we need to read the content of the CSV file as a stream using IO file read CSV as stream method. So let's see how we can do that. So type IO, then call the file read CSV as stream method. And inside the method, we need to give the file path. For this example, I will define the file path as an argument in the main method to use it. Then as the second parameter, we need to provide the type of the stream sequence. For that, I will define a new record type called employee. This record contains two fields, integer ID and string name, which are the headers of the CSV file. Then I will give employee as the second argument for the file read CSV as stream method. Now let's assign this into a variable. This is a stream type that has sequence type of employee and completion type of nilable IO error. So now I am going to iterate through the stream and do some operation for each data in the CSV file. For that, I will simply use a query action in here. So type from and the sequence type of the stream, in this case it is employee, then in and the stream name, employee stream. Then inside the do clause, define the operation that you need to do for each data. So in this case, I will simply print the ID value of the employee. So because of this employee stream can return an error value as the completion type, we need to add the check expression to handle that. So let's run our banana program to see the result. The program outputs the ID values of each line in the CSV file. In Balrena, lazy loading is a fundamental concept when working with streams. Lazy loading in Balrena streams refer to the practice of loading and processing data elements only when they are needed, rather than loading the entire dataset upfront. It enables efficient memory usage and faster data processing, especially when they deal dealing with large datasets or streams with potentially infinite elements. The data elements in the streams are not immediately loaded into memory when the stream is created. Instead, they are fetched and processed only when an operation requires them. So in here, file read CSV as stream method in the IO module will not read all the CSV data into memory. Instead of that, it loads CSV data into the memory one line after another. So let's write a Balrena program to understand this. 
assume that I need to create a new stream that contains employees that have even numbers as the ID value. For that, I will write a query to generate the employee stream that contains even IDs. So type from employee E in employee streams. Then I have to define the where condition. In the where condition, I have to filter the employees with even IDs. For that, I will create a function called is even employee ID and add the logic inside that. So whenever we call the function to check whether employee ID is even or not, this will print verifying the employee ID even or not and returns true if the ID is even. So let's call this function in the where condition and give the argument type as employee.id. Then we select the key variable which is type of employee. So this will create a stream that has sequence type of employee and completion type as dealable IO error. Important note that this even numbered employee stream not loaded data into memory until an operation requires them. So the is even employee ID function will not call in the 13 line. When an operation requires stream data, the stream process and fetch data elements by filtering employees with the even ID and fetch them into the memory. So now let's add some eager loading task in here. I will add a print statement to represent that. After that, I will print each data element in the even numbered employee string using a query operation. So in the 80th line, the query expression requires the even numbered stream. So this is the place where the stream loads the data into memory. So this is the where that the query expression in the line 12 and the where condition in the line 13 actually executed. Let's run our banner program to see the result. In here you can see that eager task was executed first. Then the program executes the even ID filtering function which is defined in the line 13. So this is because stream will load the data into memory and operate only if an operation requires them. Before going forward, let's talk a bit about inbuilt Langley function called next in streams. Next function is used to get the next element of the stream without using a loop. Next function will wrap the next data element of the stream in a record or nil if the stream ends. So this is how it works. I will call the next function on the even employee stream. This will give us the next data element of the stream wrapped with a record. Let's use a create variable code action to get the target type of this expression. You can see that it generates a nullable record with employee as the attribute. In here, the employee value should be record with ID1 and name John because it is the first line in the CSV file and the first one in the stream data queue. Let's call the next function again. In here, I will use a type guard and access the value attribute in the next employee2 variable. This will print employee record with id2 and name James. I will call the next again and this will print employee record with id3 and name Ginny. I will call the next function one more time. Here it returns nil. because the stream came to the end. So let's run our banana program to see the result. So you can see that the output of the programs are as expected. There's another way to construct a stream using a stream generator class. A generator class should contain a function called next so this next function is the same inbuilt next function of the stream that we are going to create with this generator class. 
This number generator class will generate integers from 0 to 10. The next method will return the next number in the generator. If the next number is x is 10, it will return new. In here, the next function in the generator class returns a nilable record with int value as an attribute. So that means the stream we are going to create with this generator class has a sequence type of int and completion type of nil. So let's create a stream using this generator class. For that, first we need to create a new object from the generator class. Now let's define an integer stream using this generator object. Type stream. So inside the angular brackets, we need to type int because the sequence type of the stream is int and the completion type is nil. In the name of this stream, I will go with number stream. Then after the new keyword, open and close brackets. Then inside the brackets, we need to add the instance of the generate class. So that's it. We created an integer stream using the generate class. Now let's do some operation with this. For this, we can use a for each statement to iterate through our stream and do some operation for each data element. In this case, I will print each integer value. Important to note that we can use a query action or a query expression to iterate through this stream as well. So let's run our Madonna program to see the result. So you can see that it prints numbers from 1 to 10 which are the data elements in the stream. Now we are going to construct a stream using generator class that contains nilable error type as a completion type. For that, the return type of the next function should be record with the int value as the attribute union with nilable error type. Inside the next function, we will return an error if the number exceed value 10. So this number generator class generate numbers from 0 to 10 and return an error if the number exceed 10. So let's start coding. So we need to create an object of number generate class just like we did in the previous example. Then now we are going to create our stream. So type stream. Inside the angular brackets, we need to provide the sequence type and the completion type. So in here, the sequence type is int and the completion type is nilable error. I will name this stream as number stream and then in the right hand side inside the brackets we need to provide the number generating instance. So next I will write a query expression to iterate through the stream and print each number. You can see that the compiler gives us an error. This is because here there is a possibility that this stream returns an error because the completion type is nilable error. So we need to handle that. For this, I will add a check statement in front of the query. So if the query expression returns an error, this check expression will throw it. So now let's run our Baranya program to see the result. So you can see that it will give 0 to 10 numbers and in the last line it outputs an error. This is because in the generator class we define our number generator to return an error if the number exceeds 10. So it will print from 0 to 10 and when the number is exceed the value 10 it throw an error. I hope that this video gives you a good understanding about stream data type in Baron. Thanks for watching.